Welcome back to the Augusta Civic Center. This is the Center Court Podcast, rolling with a two-man booth tonight. I'm Travis Barrett, alongside Drew Bonifant. We just finished up day six. Mm-hmm. We're nearing the finish line. Getting close. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. You're holding up? Yeah, yeah I had a shorter day today, so maybe that kind of recharged my batteries. Mm. I guess so. Um, so we had uh, Sea South uh, semifinals here at the Civic Center uh, tonight. Uh, number two, Wayne Fleet, a 53 41 winner over number three, Booth Bay. And then in the nightcap, uh, top seed of Winthrop, a 40 to 25 win over fourth seeded NYA. Uh, the girls this afternoon, uh, number one, Winthrop, 62 to 36 over number five, Old Orchard Beach. And number two, Booth Bay, a 46 to 32 winner over number 11, Trape, as the Rangers. Uh, Some would call it a Cinderella run. Some would say they were better than their 11 seed, but their, uh, their tournament ends here in the uh, regional semifinal. So that's what we've got uh, from tonight. What jumped out at you tonight, Drew? Uh, not so, not surprised so much at the uh, winners of the girls' games, but by the uh, margin, by the by the margin of victories there. Uh, I really thought Trape was going to give Booth Bay um, a test down to the wire, just because, like we mentioned yesterday, with that with that size, it just looked like such an obstacle to deal with uh, when they beat NYA. Um, Booth Bay had the answers today. Um, Winthrop had had the answers for Old Orchard Beach, so we get an MVC uh, an MVC matchup in the final. Um, and on the boys' side. No, no real surprise out of that Winthrop NYA game. You had a feeling that uh, that Winthrop would have an answer for for Teandre King and Coach Todd McArthur said it wasn't so much that they had a big elaborate plan to shut him down. Part of it was that King and his teammates couldn't hit shots, uh, and it, they they look like they may have kind of been starting to get back into the game at the end of the third quarter. They had a little bit of momentum going. It was a ten point game, but uh, uh, <laughs> Winthrop didn't score many points. But they scored enough. I think Tom MacArthur, um, you know, he joked about how uh, he was less than thrilled with how his offense had performed. Yep. I really liked his defense, so he did say, if you tell me we're going to give up 25 points, uh, I'll take that all day. And I thought, interestingly enough, both both teams, you know, Wayne Fleet, for all of their size advantage and all of their obvious skill, they let Booth Bay hang around, hang around, hang around. Um, it, they stretched it out a little bit in the fourth quarter, but after a hot start, they never really went going. And, um, you, you know, their, Rich Henry, their head coach, said that he thought that was the pace they wanted to play at, mm-hmm. that they, uh, despite what other people might think or what outsiders might think when they watch it, they pride themselves on, on their defensive effort. And so he looks at it, uh, much like MacArthur does, and says, we held Booth Bay to 41 points. That should be enough to get us a win, and it was. Yeah, and, and you can look at this and say, well, Booth Bay's going home after this round. Winthrop moves on. Booth Bay and Winthrop seem to be such even teams throughout the season. You know, it, it, how does that how does that work out? Well, I think it, it's the it's the importance of that one seed. It was the case last year, and it's the case this year. Winthrop avoided Wayne Fleet and Booth Bay until the final. They let those two teams beat each other and yeah. and uh, take care of it. MacArthur was saying that was a bigger. Uh, a bigger key for their success last year because had, uh, because those three teams, Wayne Fleet, Holly last year, and Winthrop were head and shoulders above the competition. That wasn't so much the case this year. But it was still a case where Wayne Fleet and Booth Bay were the teams everybody was looking at. Winthrop gets to let them take care, uh, you know, knock each other out, and it's on to the regional final for the fifth straight year for the Ramblers. Uh, earlier today here in this uh, very same Augusta Civic Center, Class D South Girls Semifinals, uh, number one Greenville, 52-33 to 33 winner over number four Seacoast Christian. And in an upset, uh, at least by the seeds, and I think by what most people expected to have happened, yep. uh, number three Valley, a two-point winner over number two Rangeley, 49-47. Uh, I believe that means, uh, without the D South boys right in front of me, but I'm, I'm positive that with the exception of the Class D South girls, uh, both Class A North, uh, both Class C South, and one of the two D South finals will all pit the number one versus number two seeds. In a tournament that we love to look at crazy upsets and mm-hmm. wild things that happen, I don't know that we got that many of them this year. Not really. Not, not a lot of, yeah, where it's where it was an upset on the on the scoreboard, where the, where the underdog team was able to pull it off. Some underdog teams threatened. Mm-hmm. Uh, it felt like in, in the A North Boys Tournament, we had uh, lower seeds constantly um, constantly challenging for that upset, but they weren't able to finish the job. And so, yeah, you know, when we look back at, this bra- at these brackets, mm-hmm. we forget how those games went. We're going to feel like, boy, there was 
Yeah. There was no six. There was no. There was no. Uh, no drama or suspense. It was just. It was going chalk all throughout. I think the one. I think the one place where it happened was the opening game of the girls C South quarterfinals, uh, when a number eleven trait beat number three North Yarmouth Academy. Yep. In a game that was never really close. But even after that game, most everybody said Trape's not an 11 seed. Yeah, yeah, they were saying it was uh, that they were a team that they beat NYA during the, during the season. They split with them during the regular season, so clearly had shown that they could uh, go toe to toe with these higher seeds, and they proved it. And then, to your to the point you had just made, the one, two, and three seed, or the one, two, and four seed games after that, uh, you know, it was it was the favorites running away with them. Yeah, for sure. So. Uh, Again, we've mentioned it every night uh, this week, but uh, our, our friends at Portland Glass, uh, you can get uh, all of our tournament coverage for free this week. Uh, you don't have to be a subscriber yet. We strongly encourage you to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, we have, again, game stories, feature stories, analysis, uh, podcasts, videos. Uh, it's all there on the, uh, on the website. And um, can I help you, Randy? These guys do a hell of a job on this podcast. I just want to endorse it. Wow. Oh, thanks, wow. man. Wow. I thought that our good friend Randy Whitehouse from the Sun Journal was going to uh, take a dig at me. <laughs> He's turned over a new leaf, that guy. Uh, anyway, make sure you're hitting up on the website uh, for everything. And tomorrow, we've got three regional finals for you. Uh, one of them down in Portland in Class B South Boys. Uh, top seed of Miranda Cook is through to the final. They're going to play uh, number six, Wells. And then here, uh, that's an, an afternoon game. And then uh, tomorrow night here in the Augusta Civic Center, Class A North, uh, a couple of one versus two matchups. Uh, Hamden is the number one seed on both the boys and the girls' side. Uh, Hamden boys against number two, Coney. And Hamden girls against number two, Gardner. You want to preview one of those, Drew? Well, we'll start with the, uh, the B-South boys with Miranda Cook versus Wells. Wells is in their fourth straight regional final. They've, uh, they, you know, they... They're very familiar with the stage and with these games. Miranda Cook is Miranda Cook is not not with not with this game. Um, but going down and talking to, to the the team today, that's a very very confident team. Uh, you know, Travis Magnus and the coach there was saying we've been playing our best basketball for the last six weeks. And you may look at that and say, well, how could you say that when you almost lost the one versus eight game? But that was a that was a misleading eighth seed in Freeport. That was a team that was, a, I believe, they were a win away from being a four seed. So. Uh, much better match than that. So that's a team that's, that's very confident. They're going to put they're going to put together a good game tomorrow. And with the A North Finals, uh, I think we were talking yesterday how Coney seemed to get the win that they needed. Um, that 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 had it all the way, or most of the way at least, uh, win over Madomic to kind of to, to look like the, the formidable team that they were coming into this tournament on the tournament stage. And Hampton Gardner, I, I'm I'm intrigued to. to to, to see that one because Gardner's got got such a got such a difference maker down low with with uh, Lizzie Gruber. Hammond's been, dealt with that size. They beat him during the regular mm-hmm. season, so it's not like they don't have an answer for that. But it's just it, it's a tough it's a tough element to go up against. But Hammond's <laughs> Hammond's just been figuring out all all uh, all along. So they're going to be tough again. Hamden had uh, Sydney Hodge with nine points in their semifinal win uh, the other day. And uh, three other players with eight points, and I think you can look at it and go, "Yeah, who's their go-to offensive performer?" But I don't, I don't think that's the Broncos' concern at all. In fact, mm-hmm. uh, I went back and looked at it today. It's 17 straight games now for Hamden, having allowed uh, 41 or fewer points to the opposition. Really, and I think it's and it's all defense, all defense uh, for them. It's, it's um, but I think ironically, you know, we can say the same thing about Gardner in a lot of ways. I think. Uh, Gardner coach Mike Gray feels like we've probably got some some options on nights on where to get points from. But even the other night, you know, after they beat Scout Hegan in the semifinals, he talked about his team's defense and he was less worried about all the shots they missed. I mean, we talked the other night about talked last night about their you know one for 16 second quarter or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. He didn't really seem all that concerned because he's like, we took good shots, yep. they were open, but eventually they're going to fall. He was far more pleased with the defensive effort. And so I think Hamden and Gardner, both of those teams, I, I will not be shocked to see a game tomorrow where we're looking uh, late fourth quarter and it's, you know, 32 to 30. Yeah, it was Gardner's, Gardner's coach, Mike Gray, looked, uh, was 
seem more happy with how his team played than McCarthy today because mm-hmm. McCarthy's team was turning the ball over. They weren't mm-hmm. getting any sort of rhythm going. So it was almost like he was standing there watching it going, what am I seeing? <laughs> what's yeah, what's yeah. going on here? While, while uh, uh, Gray was watching a team that was running its offense, just not finishing, just not getting the shots to fall. And yeah. It's easier to look at that as a coach and think, okay, those shots will fall tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, going back to the A North boys with Coney Hamden, Russ Bart with the Hamden coach, had a really good, really good job of of laying out what the key of that game is going to be. He, you know, you often hear coaches say, "Oh, it just comes down to, uh, you know, how we uh, protect the ball and uh, whether we and you know they, they say kind of they'll speak in generalities like that." Bartlett put a number on it. He said it's going to come down to how we protect the ball, but he says turnovers 15 to 20 that's the number if we get fifth if we're 15 or below we win if we're 20 or more they win and so hmm. it was uh it was a, it was a pretty precise uh, prediction from uh um, for bartlett so we'll see if that's how it plays out tomorrow funny with the hamden boys team they've had two really narrow two they've escaped <laughs> certain death you know yeah. really in both of their games here in augusta this week uh they uh, mount blue easily could have beaten them at the end and um you know, certainly the same could be said for Brewer, which took the lead late yep. and couldn't see it out. So, uh, and again, on the girls' side, um, you know, Hamden and Gardner both have better games in them than what they showed in the semifinals. And so they both survived some scares. So I think it's, I think it's both those matchups are, are pretty intriguing. I, I think Hamden and Gardner girls probably play more similar styles than the Coney and Hamden boys do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the difference in styles is what's going to make the Coney Hamden game. I, I think the similarity in styles and who does it better is what's going to make the girls game. You got to wonder uh, it, with with that Coney Hamden game. Speaking on that mental toughness angle that Hamden has clearly shown, whether DJ Mains is going to hammer that home for his team, where it's, hey, look, even if even if we get back to back threes and we're up twelve and late in the third and it feels like everything's going our way, this team that doesn't mean this team is dead. This, you know, they come back. They even. They're used to playing from ahead, but they've shown they can play from behind. So it's something to keep in mind, even if the game is uh, going Coney's direction tomorrow. Oh. Once again, just to remind you, uh, centralmaine.com slash high school sports, where to find coverage of the entire tournament. Let's jump back quickly and put a wrap on today. Class East South uh, semifinals. Uh, I... <laughs> Winthrop Booth Bay girls as we kind of look ahead to their matchup Saturday. I, I think um, they've played three times this year. Booth Bay uh, handed Winthrop its only two regular season losses, yet Winthrop still emerged with the number one seed. Uh, Winthrop did beat them in the MVC championship game, which I think is a game that both those teams uh, played to win, at least on the surface. So I don't know. I, I, I've watched both of those teams this week. They both had their moments where they've looked really, really good, done a lot of things, uh, been dynamic, been multifaceted uh, offensively, played really good defense. But they both also had their moments where they've looked less than stellar. And, mm-hmm. and you have to wonder if if the opponent in this case, either Ruth Bay or Winthrop, is poised enough to take advantage when things aren't going right. I mean, even Ruth Bay coach Brian Blethen said when he came out, the first thing he said was, well, I just told the girls, sometimes you got to win them dirty. Yeah. And I think he meant ugly. I don't think he meant they played dirty, but it was, the point was made, which mm-hmm. was, again, there are a lot of coaches that are playing in regional finals over the next couple of days, scratching their heads going, we're still not quite there. Yep. Yeah, we've heard that a lot from coaches, haven't we, where they say, you got to win that one ugly one. you gotta, you got to win that one where things don't quite go your way. And so, yeah, we're, we're seeing that from even teams that we expected to really put up a good showing in this tournament to have games where things just don't just don't click for them, but they're winning. Let's wrap this up with something we haven't done this week, but we'll do it now just for you, Drew. Give me one player tonight that you saw that was a difference maker that uh, may or may not get recognized for the work they did. How's that? That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good question. Would you uh, like me to start while you think about it? Yeah, you go ahead. All right. Uh, I know she was their leading scorer today, but I thought uh, uh, Winthrop Sr., Kenna Souza, uh, on a team that is so uh, guard-oriented and guard-heavy, uh, she continues to be, um, you know, a dynamic post player, grabbing rebounds and um, control and defending some really good players. She's often mismatched size-wise. Um, 
but also uh, she extends defenses because she can step out and hit threes, and she did. Uh, she had she was four or six from three point range today, despite being their number five, you know, in that Winthrop offense. So I think it's one of the things that I think makes her and and in turn makes Winthrop so so dangerous is is the play. Kenneth Souza wrote a column about it, mm-hmm. um, which you can find on the website. I think when I asked, I was not I was surprised to get the answer from. Um, Winthrop coach Joe Burnham when I asked him you know about about what it's like for her and such a guard oriented team and he laughed and he said well actually growing up she always was a guard but yep. she was the first one to hit the growth spurt so congratulations <laughs> you're, our, you're our number five yeah. yeah she I remember watching her as a, as a freshman and sophomore player and she was yet that that pure shooter she mm. basically stayed outside and waited for the ball to come to her and she'd hoist up a shot and she could score 12 15 points that way she's become a more uh versatile player for them for sure um my player for uh i'll go with the winter boys and i'll go with noah groovy um mm. down uh player down low he reminds me of of that sam figueroa uh role from last year's team where it's a guy who he's not their headliner down low it was cam wood last year it's jevin smith this year but no uh I'm not sure if it's Groob or Groovy. He's that. He's that. Um, he, he's he's always getting you know, tough putbacks, tough boards. It seems like he. It seems like he'll get a basket when they need it. Uh, he, he's he, he's somebody who was making plays like that early on, but it just seems like he's becoming more and more of a factor for them. And it, that's just always seems to be such a uh, such a part of Winthrop's identity is not that one guy down low who does everything, but it's a team effort. It's multi, it's multiple players who are able to be tough down low. Um, you know, Figueroa played a key, a key role in that team that won a title last year, and uh, you know, Ruby seems to be stepping right into that role again this year. You want to do one more fun thing? Sure. You sure? Absolutely. All right. A North uh, Regional Finals tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. Who's your one unsung player that's going to make a difference in the boys' game? In the boys' game, uh, it's tough to go with TJ Hennigan after he had that big uh, that big game against yeah. uh, uh, Boer. I'm going to go with Kyle Dewan. Um, He's, you know, he scored the first seven points of the game uh, of the game Ooh, against Badomic, and then it just you started to see McCormick and Dearborn and uh, Briggs take over, and you kind of forgot uh, that 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 start he had. But he was probably either their best player or their second best player in the first quarter, uh, and he's a guy who, you know, he's he's he, he gets he gets tougher he gets rebounds more than you would think so with his with his frame would would get yep. uh he plays he, he plays he, he plays more hard nose now than he did uh as, as a as a um as a sophomore uh and he's just a guy who can get hot from down um from beyond the arc and if he does if he does that could be the that could be the factor that tips coney yep. over the edge and gives them and that uh gives them an advantage that Hamby can overcome how about you I think for me, uh, for Gardner, it's uh, Cassidy Collins. Mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, she's. <clears throat> I'd be shocked if she's their leading scorer tomorrow. I mean, she's even among their two or three leading scorers. But I think what Collins can do for Gardner tomorrow is make sure that a tough physical team like Hamden, a lot like Gardner is, um, is not able to uh, completely shut Lizzie Gruber out of the game and not have to worry about the ramifications of that. I think if you're if you're Nick Winchester's team and you're trying to take Gruber out of out of that post, however you do that, uh, then Collins is going to be the player that's going to be grabbing rebounds uh, for second chance points at the offensive end and at the defensive end, making sure, uh, just as importantly, that uh, that Hamden is not getting second chance points of their own. So I think she, I think that's a key player that Gardner really needs to to get the step up because I think J.C. Stevens is a four-year starter at point guard. She can run that offense. Um, you know, I think uh, I think Bell, um, huge help out there. I, I just think they've got plenty of they've got plenty of experienced players that can score and know their roles. And I think and, and Collins is one of them. I think she's just got to do her role uh, better than most probably. If, if we're talking about tipping the scales in Gardner's favor, she played really well against Skowhegan mm-hmm. in that in that semifinal. And she was out she was out all of last year. Uh, was a player with a with a knee injury. Was a player that Gardner really missed. Mm-hmm. And so it's you know everybody talks about the new player they got in Gruber, but really they got two mm-hmm. key players. It's almost like they got two free agents yeah. <laughs> added to the team, and and it's really lifted that it's really lifted that team. 
I think that's it. I think we survived day six, Drew. All right. Uh, have fun tomorrow in Portland with the Miranda Cook Wells game. We'll do. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a good game. I'll have the Hamden Gardner girls here, and uh, Travis Lazarczyk will be do- handling the uh, Coney Hamden boys. Uh, that's it for the Center Court podcast tonight from the Augusta Civic Center. Get some rest, people, because it's a it's a big day tomorrow. We're we're uh, we're all regional finals from here, Drew. That's right. We've got, yeah, we've got the uh, only the top teams left standing. We're looking forward to it. Thanks again for listening, and we'll catch you all tomorrow night.